everyone! Welcome to a grappling edition of ARG Presents. I'm your good pal, your good buddy, LaParca, a.k.a. Amigo Aaron, joined by a man who likes to do a little stomping, and he likes to do a little trucking, apparently. I give you the bread. Hey, how's it going, man? Listen, this week, Brent, in case it's not obvious, we spun the wheel, we made the deal. Yes. And we're excited about this one, because you know something, brother? It's yes, pro, I do. It's pro, not you, a, a brother in a non-relationship. Uh, oh, okay. We spun the wheel. We made the deal. Dryer Lent has spoken. And this week, we'll be playing pro wrestling games. But pro wrestling. Now, let me ask you a question, man. When it comes to pro wrestling, are you a big fan of the gamage? Uh, generally, no. Yeah, why not? Uh... I mean, there are a few standout hits, right? Yeah. Uh, you've got your WrestleFest. You've yeah. got your Matt Manias. Uh, any of the games, uh, the home console games that let you design your own moves, I'm yeah. a big fan of that. But typically, uh, they're fighting games with shallow systems. Oh, uh, that's a total burn. You know, I mash the button a lot, that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm not a big fan of it. Not big, but, I mean, I'm not saying I don't play them. I'm not saying I don't, like... I, I I sit in the corner when everyone else is having a good time. I, obviously, I play them, but uh, yeah, overall, not my not my top ten game types. I thought we'd go back and take a quick look at sort of some of the highlights and lowlights in the pro wrestling world. So let's give this a shot. So pro wrestling games, it seems like they've been around since we had gaming. Absolutely, almost. yeah. I mean, you were they had you had pro wrestling games coming out, and some of the fairly early. Uh, uh, consoles. Uh, I'm trying to think. That, I, it, I'm sitting here trying to ponder if the 2600 had a wrestling. But I think it did. Uh, I know the Intellivision <clears throat> had one uh, back in the day. Uh, but these games, you know, you're talking some pretty rudimentary stuff back in the day. Do you, do you remember the first wrestling game that you ever played? Apparently, there was a game called Title Match Pro Wrestling for the Atari 2600. Oh, there you go. I thought there was. I, I believe it's made by like a third party. I don't remember who made it, though. You, did, what was the first one you actually played? Oh, like, vividly remember? Yeah. Matt Mania. R really? That was yeah. pretty far in. Yeah. No, ooh, ooh, no, I take that back. Yeah. What was that one we had for the... Uh, WrestleManiac for the... Uh, that's Garrett the City one. Clark computer? That's the one. That's the one I, I remember, yeah. Yeah, that but, was... A, that was we, uh, you know... Uh, we purchased that. We were prolific pirates. There's a reason why we purchased it, because no one had it. Yeah. And so, yes, we actually went to the back of the, uh, uh, I believe Diacom uh, did WrestleManiac. We actually played it on uh, the Coco show uh, a while back. Uh, but the uh, uh, the first wrestling game I remember playing, I think, was probably tag team wrestling in the arcade. Uh, back, way back in the day, I believe Data East made tag team wrestling, where you were were you a tag team, yeah. and you, and you have to you have to hit buttons as you sink through the moves when you guys grapple, and then once you do once you let go of the button, it performs whatever move you came up on if you outperform the other guy. It was actually a pretty fun game. I remember playing it the first time. I think it was the old Cowden Park, if you can believe it. Like, wow. Yeah. So it was a long time ago. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> you're right. Matt Mania was the one, the real game that really I, I remember distinctly being really good in the arcade. Yeah, uh, a fun game. Uh, I believe that was Techno that did Matt Mania. Yeah. I, I think we've covered it on the show. It had a sequel that was not that good. Yeah. Now, when, it, when it comes to <laughs> when it comes to home wrestling, if you, aside from WrestleMania, do you remember what you? Did you play the NES games or WrestleMania game or anything? I, I mean, played, yes. Yeah. Uh, as you know, I owned very few NES games. That that was during the rental boon. Yeah. Um, which I, I we rented one of the wrestling games, one of the early black box wrestling games. And it, it was okay. Wrestling games were a good <laughs> renter. You yeah. Really didn't necessarily have, especially the old ones. Because I never liked any of the NES or Super Nintendo ones at all. I don't think I liked a single. That's not true. I forgot about the shirt I'm wearing here, uh, the, the pro wrestling game. one. That was actually a pretty decent game. Uh, okay. Oh, you didn't like that uh, no, one? No, no. Again, my problem with wrestling games, and we have played and enjoyed wrestling games for many a decade. Okay. Yeah. You and I, sitting, playing two-player crap. 
Yeah. So I don't want it to think like, oh, wrestling games, that's like poop, what a stick. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> it, it's you. We don't want it to think that, yeah. you're right. It, I, I've played and enjoyed a, many of these games. They are just not my to go-to game when I'm thinking of games I want to play. Uh, with the notable exceptions of Matt Mania. Yeah. Uh, because Matt Mania is, is solvable, first of all. Yeah. You can actually play Matt Mania Pretty much until you want to lose. Well, I mean, it's not. You have to be a very good hand. You do. Know, you do. Like myself. Yeah. Who probably should be world champion at that game, undefeatable. Um, uh, you've got your Wrestle Fest, yeah, which is I just do. amazing. That's a, sort of the top of the heap. Yeah. Really. And, and again, it's the thing that made uh, Wrestle Fest so good was first of all, each character was actually unique, had yeah. had strengths and minuses. Yeah. Um, but we're still. It was still a level playing field. Anyone could go in there and beat anyone else. Yeah. And most of the modern wrestling games, that's just not the case. Even yeah. some of the games back in back in the day, that wasn't well, the case. Well, in for modern that. games, the guys have actual rankings in your WWE games yeah. and whatnot. You know, WrestleFest was a quite a great game, and also I want to give a shout out to WWF Superstars. It's a great game, the predecessor. To See, I don't agree. It's I a, don't think that was a great game. I love game. that game. It's a lot of fun. I no. think you. I think you, I don't think you're giving enough dap. I thought it was a real good game. When it comes to arcade wrestling, though, I've really, you've only got maybe three that you can say are really good games. Now we've owned, we've owned WWF Superstars, we've owned Wrestle, uh, we've owned Wrestle Fest, we've owned WWF WrestleMania, which is the Mortal Kombat ripoff. Yep. We've owned Matt Mania. I think the only one we haven't owned is Mania Challenge. We owned uh, that other god awful wrestling game mm -hmm. uh, that we that was sitting right here forever. What was that? Remember what that thing's called? Tag Team. No, not Tag Team. It's a, uh, the main event. Main event. The main yeah. event had one huge button on it, yeah. and then a tag button, and you and everything was all about tapping that huge glowing button. What you think I would have loved, but I did. Yeah, no, no one loved it. Although the, our graphics were pretty good in parts of it, the sound was pretty good. Uh, I think we covered that on this show too. If you can, we've covered a lot of wrestling on this show because <clears> I'm a big fan. Uh, but uh, when it comes to the home stuff, more modern stuff uh, that has the creator wrestler and stuff, I mean that's a lot of fun. When wrestling was really hot in the 90s, yeah, uh, uh, me and my buddies would all get together on Monday night, and we'd had, this was a novel at the time, we had two TVs set up, and we would watch, we'd watch WWF Raw on one TV, and we'd watch uh, WCW Nitro on the other TV, and the, one was big and one was small, and you could tell what people were into by which TV got what. Yeah. So the better show got the bigger TV, so you can see how the things up. But we also had another TV set up just to play wrestling games during the show. So really, you're the cause of our energy crisis. And we, yeah, well, and we played we played a game called uh, Tokyo Shinden Two, which was on the PlayStation, which is a Japanese exclusive that we got into because we also love Japanese wrestling, New Japan Pro Wrestling, and I played that probably more than any wrestling game at home ever, just because of the sheer fact that we all loved it. We all made characters, and making characters in a game that's Japanese not easy because all the uh, everything was in Japanese text. So we had a translation that we used. We had it set beside the TV that had all the stuff in it. And even today, my son and me have gotten into uh, WWE 2K, uh, 20, 2K20, which was that game that came out a few years ago that was hated, reviled. Here's the funny thing about that game. The, the glitching and stuff, it, they, they ended up patching it to the point where it was actually, that pretty much got rid of it, but it still occasionally shows up and it's so funny that we did that's part of the appeal of playing the game i recently bought uh wwf or wwe 2k22 and played it and we hated it so much it's the only steam game i've ever returned so there you go have you played much any of wrestling any recently no no you're no, done no not since uh uh it's probably been it's probably been a decade oh my god since i well, really got into a there's wrestling a game, game. out called uh uh uh, re it's called Retromania that you might like. It's sort of the, it's a, literally the sequel to WrestleFest. They bought the rights to say that. It's not great. It was okay. I was, I had higher hopes for it, but it's, it's, it's a modern game. It's on the Switch uh, that you can play. Also, the, the, the newest Fire Pro wrestling games that are out on the PC are really good if you're in the Fire Pro series. Fire Pro series is a uh, series of, a, more like a simulation. Yeah. There's another game coming out that's a wrestling-based, like, adventure, like, I don't know what you would call it, like a, uh, a drama game where you control the backstage stuff. It's, I mean, it's like a story game, and it looks like I, it might be pretty I, fun. I could get into that, maybe. So, that might be, so wrestling games are much, you know, in the true EA tradition or whatever, they make one a new one pretty much every year, except for 
2K21 they didn't do because 2K20 was so bad they skipped that <laughs> They year. had to fix 20 before they you know. could move on. What about the really arcadey stuff from like Capcom? So did you play much into that, of that uh, stuff? Well, yeah, and those sort of leak into I'm I'm less about a wrestling game, I'm more a fighting game. Yeah. Um, but, and they're, they're all right. They're yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not going to, uh-huh. again, I'm not going to run to a – to the nearest console and start playing any of them, but do you I, like, I respect their existence. Do you like games that are yes. re, like licensed and based on real wrestling, or do you prefer stuff that's like totally out there that like doesn't have any real well, guys in it, it at in all? In the '90s, I, I, it was all about the licensed stuff. Yeah, because uh, I, I had a short love affair with wrestling when it sucked a little bit less. Um, but now, no, now it's all about I want to create a wrestler. And, and fight against other created wrestlers and that kind of thing. You know, uh, one of our chat members here, uh, uh, Pondagosa, has mentioned that there's a new uh, AEW wrestling game coming out. Now, if you're not a wrestling fan, uh, just to give you a quick backstory, WWF slash WWE eventually purchased their competition uh, in 2001, and they've pretty much been the only game in town, I mean, with a few minor exceptions, until recently uh, a new promotion has, been, has built up. And the new promotion, in fact, ha- is uh, AEW, and they have a game coming out. And the game coming out is from the same people that made all the classic N64 wrestling games. I'm sure, we already talked about, uh, but uh, you know the the big time games that were real popular. Uh, and so we'll see how that goes. That should be a lot of fun. And uh, also, I just saw something on the video. We should mention that we also own a pro wrestling themed pinball machine. Yeah, that's a good one. WWF Royal Rumble. It's a real fun one. Underrated, isn't it, Brent? Yeah. I think we paid what nine fifty for that thing. We I had to go up to Michigan, did. I think, to get it. So a pretty good one. With all that said, no, uh-huh. we knew just from the kind of tepid reception last week that people were not exact. Some people, some people were not exactly thrilled that pro wrestling had raised its ugly head. I. I I'm thrilled, but hey. I think we both. Well, I didn't. Did you consciously pick games that were outside the norm this week, or did you have? Oh one? yeah, yeah, yeah. We both picked games that I would not call traditional wrestling games, yeah. uh, and so uh, uh, we thought we would just try. Listen, I wanted to play something I'd never played too. You know, there's a ton of wrestling games. There's a, there's a universe of these things. Yes, and I thought it'd be fun to play something I never played before. Uh, and you played something that I would say is more universally well-known, but probably not as a wrestling game. We're going to lead the dance with you. What did you bring to the table for pro wrestling <clears throat> games, Brent? And there is there is a lot of things that fall under the wrestling category, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. What does it take to, to be a wrestling game? To me, you have to have a grapple system. I think that is the number one most important. Not yes. throw, not, you know... Street Fighter hit tours in a button throw type stuff. There has to be a grappling mechanism. Yeah, I'll agree with that. Um, I think the number two thing is you have to have some kind of pin mechanic. Either either they have to stay down for so long or you have to cover them. I think that is a, a, so a, a pin or pinfall or knockout. That's right. Thing. Okay. Right. Agree. Okay. All right. And <clears throat> I think the third requirement is you have to have characters that have unique to them moves right yes i, I think there's all that. i think those okay. are the three things that qualify you as then you can call yourself a wrestling game all right so this game covers all those and i picked king of monsters for the neo Geo. yes this is a controversial i don't think it's controversial it's not that i mean it, <laughs> these aren't pro wrestlers per se but it is, they are performing pro wrestling it's a wrestling game that okay. was the category all right so king of monsters for those that don't know is <laughs> did you know there was a story in this, Aaron? I assumed all the monsters came and like wanted to see who the king was. Well, you're close. Okay. So the world's going good. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, in the in the early '90s, game wise. Or the world's going good. Technological advancements. Everyone's thriving. Good time. And then the monsters show up, right? Every time. <clears throat> That's when they and, wait till you're going good. That's and, when they come around. And the monsters. Aren't they? They don't come together. They just all sort of start showing up on Earth, and they're like, you know what? Screw humanity! I'm going to go around and wreck some stuff. So that's what they do. That's what they say. Yeah. Screw us. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Aliens didn't do that. Um. So they 
they go and they just start re- wreaking havoc. Yeah. And society it just accepts that this is a thing. What this okay? is the new normal? This is the new normal. All right. You might go you might drive to your job in the skyscraper one day, next day skyscraper's not there, you meet over at Bob's house. I see. That's that's just the way it All is. Right. So the monsters are living like that for a while. And then in nineteen ninety six, yeah. like the monsters become aware that there are other monsters on other parts of the planet. So they all decide to come and meet in Japan and see who's the strongest monster. It's like the Highlander movie. <laughs> you know, there could be only That's one. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you know, if you watch any of the to- in monster movies in Japan, this is sort of a, what you said, that beginning part, where they just get used to them. That's sort of what happens. <laughs> yeah. They're like weather patterns. That's right. Oh, here comes Gamera again. <laughs> Oh, geez, you know, here he comes. Brace yourself, it's a camera attack. I love it. So you have six characters uh, uh, who who might fall into monster norms but are legally different in, uh, in certain ways. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you've got Gion, your Godzilla-like dinosaur. Dinosaur, he's not a giant lizard, yeah, he's a dinosaur. Yeah, I understand. You've got Wu, who, who is very... Uh, King Kong like, but yeah. but not King Kong. You've got Poison Ghost, which is definitely a unique character. It's a creature creature composed of toxic waste. Yeah. So you, uh, I dated a chick like that <laughs> one. Uh, you've got Rocky, who's a a giant stone golem. Beetle Mania, who, who's <laughs> a large beetle. Yeah. And Astro Guy. See, I thought Astro Guy was the good guy of the game. No. He's a monster from outer space just like everyone else. Really? That does explain why he revels in smashing (laughs) stuff. I I played him a lot. Now, he seemed to not care. He is... He is... Sort of a a uh, uh, ultra uh, a uh, Ultraman yeah type character. I'm assuming that these guys had cooler names in Japan <laughs> than what they brought here I, I, because I, Astro Man, for example, not so good. Well, hey, yeah, or Poison Ghost. I, I kind of like Poison Ghost. So you choose one of these characters, <clears throat> and you go through uh, six all the other characters, right? Yeah. You you battle all the other characters in iconic Tokyo cities, you know. Uh, and you you fight each one of them to a pinfall. And while you're which, in... Which is ludicrous. Oh, just... <laughs> well, you know, the monsters decided these rules. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And they, how do they... Did they have convene at the council? I'm wondering who's counting the pinfall. I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, you it's, it's one-on-one or two-on-two action. You can yeah. play two players simultaneous on this. Which, if you do that... It's madness. I, thumbs up to you, yeah. but man, it doesn't... It's fun to watch. Yeah. I mean, it is a massive carnage. <laughs> so, uh, your monster has a standard punch, a standard kick. He can jump. Uh, he can also throw people off the ropes. Yeah. Uh, and the, <laughs> yeah. the ropes in this game are... I, I guess our technology was advanced enough to put up these huge electric fields yeah. that uh, uh, the monsters can't get through, but they bounce off of. So that's sort of the the traditional ropes in the game. One would wonder why they didn't cover more places with these. <laughs> well, I guess this is the part that they didn't cover, just where the monsters get the romp. Maybe they built a hole in the city <laughs> next door. So uh, the, 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 the uh, object of the game is to get your pinfall. Uh, and to do this, you've got your punch kicks. You've got a grapple system where you can do a, an a array of throws. You also have power moves, uh, depending if you press your two attack buttons fast enough, uh, and, which usually is some kind of projectile type attack. Uh, and all the while, all the time you're fighting, right, the city is just trying to do its thing. <laughs> the commuters are still going to work. Uh, the trains are still running, <coughs> and you're just walking and smashing buildings as you're throwing everyone around. And at the end of the level, you actually get a casualty counter of how many people died during your fight. Yeah. Which is yeah. kind of something, I guess. Um, <laughs> not good. But, but it really shows that the monsters do not care no. about, the, about the humans, right? And the army comes out, and they're flying jets, and they're shooting shooting missiles, but they do almost no damage. They're not yeah. even worth dodging. You just kind of, you just eat it. No one cares. 
So you do this through six rounds, and then you have to fight yourself. And then I always thought that the game just looped forever. Right. Right? Uh, it doesn't. You go through all, everyone again, then you fight your doppelganger again, then the game has an ending. Really? Yeah. The ending is a news reporter uh, panically announcing uh, who won the tournament, and then he's like, oh no, like, <coughs> like the... Uh, the uh, 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 monsters are coming for us now. And it, it actually shows him in his little newscast, and the rubble starts falling from the ceiling. And the last thing you see on the screen is a huge piece of rubble falling and killing this guy. It's ridiculous. <laughs> so, oh real God. quick, let's talk about the, the gameplay. Aaron, did you think this was a uh, deep game or did you think it was i should say did you think it was deep enough to hold your interest well i'll be honest with you, the, the grapple system was beyond me i just basically waited into combat got into a grapple and just started whacking stuff trying to get to figure out what yeah was that's on. okay so you figured it yeah, out yeah that's <laughs> it and i like i didn't understand the counters like sometimes you pick a guy up for like a press slam or something and but you can't get him up yeah and then they, they revert put a reversal on you so i didn't quite understand that i also i noticed that sometimes my opponent could grab like a plane out of the sky and like yes. bash me with it. I could never pull that trick. I tried too. I don't know how. Do you know how to do yeah, that? Uh, I mean, I've done it. I guess yeah, it's uh, less about the, knowing how. When you're in the bay, happening. you could go over and grab like a boat, boat yep. and hammer. <laughs> I thought it was pretty funny. It's fun to slam the guy <laughs> into like an into the electrical grid. The fact that you throw each other off the electrical ropes is yeah. hilarious. Yeah. Like they didn't try to hide what they were doing here. If you, I'm a fan of the old Godzilla movies and stuff, and if you watch them, they do all, like Godzilla and the, and the other guys do all kinds of pro wrestling stuff. Oh, yeah. You know, among yeah. other things. Godzilla also disco dances. He does gymnastics, pole vaults, long, he does all kinds of crazy, he does karate, he does all kinds of stuff. So he's a multi-talented monster. He's probably the most fleshed out of the giant monsters. Uh, but so they, there's definitely... There's th no one's going to be like, wait, they really ruined uh, giant monster movies because they didn't. No, goofy, no, this is, yeah. Goofy, silly, stupid stuff is the norm in those. So I had no problem with this being a pro wrestling game. You know, this reminds me a lot of Def Jam Fight for New York, where they just took sort of a subject and they're like, eh, we'll use the subject and just put wrestling moves in. <laughs> That's what they did. And it works every time. There's nothing better than seeing one monster pile drive another monster. I like watching monsters drop the big elbow on each yeah. other. At the end, your guy jumps up near and, and like drops on top of the other guy's pose. The big set. Yeah. I usually played what was the guy's name? The man, and he would jump. Astro man. And when he landed, he'd pose. He'd be like, hey, he'd big <laughs> smile on his face, which I thought was funny. I liked it, but I mean, am I a huge fan of this game? I like the plot. I like the wackiness. Yeah. And this is a game that I'd put on with the boy. And play for like 10 minutes of wacky time. Yeah. Because it's not deep enough to get, for me, now there may be more depth I don't know about, but to me it was not de deep enough to really get into. It's just sort of one of those games you plunk a quarter into, you laugh at how stupid it is, and then you and then you go play something else. That's I, basically the way I would, I, I, I would say it. I absolutely agree. Uh, there's a few things that really, I'm not going to say ruin this game, but don't, that keep this game from being elevated from eh, it's okay to something much much better the destruction around you is fun yeah it's fun and you almost find yourself gravitating more to destroying classical elements big towers or or skyscrapers yeah or uh ferris wheels you that becomes your focus over what the focus actually should be, which is defeating the other monster. I like throwing them into that crap. That was fun right. For me. But <clears throat> so, and the reason why that is is the the actual combat system in this is not deep at all. It is uh, uh, it's easy because you you have so little control. I mean, you have perfectly fine control. But you don't have enough there to do. It should be that you can, uh, you know, throw them off the ropes and then 
body slam him and pick him up and do something else and have yeah. a very a, a wide array of moves and you don't. Yeah. Even if this had a wrestle fest label of complexity, that would help. It's that even, would yes. Like it's way too random. And the thing is, they've got all the building blocks here. Even the moves are great. All they need to do is flesh out the grapple system. That would that, that the grapple system blows. Yeah. And what they tried to supplement the complexity with is a power system. And you have a bar <coughs> that if you do a certain move where you basically bear hug your opponent, yeah. you can release some of their power out. And you can go and collect that power. And when you fill up your power bar, you will uh, palette swap to a new color of your enemy become yeah. more powerful. I was able to do that sometimes. Yeah, you yeah. can do that twice, actually. And then that's it. That aspect of the game is completely over. Uh, unfortunately, that's lame and stupid. Yeah, uh, and weird, too. What would have made way more sense, uh, and, and wouldn't have added much complexity to the game, is if you want to have that power system, don't have it where you bear hug your opponent. Have it where you destroy something on the landscape, because people already want to do that anyway, right? Right. So, have the power orbs in there if you want to go with the power. Yeah. I think the power system is stupid. The power orbs are lame. <laughs> but <laughs> if, you, if you're if you going to have that power up system, it needs to be part of the landscape. Yeah. I I, I agree with everything you said there. The the, the fact that the, the way that it works, and like I said, they, they wouldn't have to, there's nothing graphically or fundamentally would have to change about the game. Correct. It's just that the, the power system, and you're right, using the environment would be a lot cooler yeah, like I'd like to grab hold of a building and pit, break it off and just whack the guy with it. Something like that. Now, I know this game had a sequel, and yes. I haven't played the sequel. And I was wondering if you had had you looked at the sequel. I at have all? played the sequel. And did they it, correct anything that we didn't like? Well, no. I, the sequel was disappointing. Oh. Instead of fixing problems that they had. Uh, they really went more of the same. The levels are larger. Can't you play more people at once or something? There was something. There was some oh, gimmick oh, there. I don't know that. I don't know. Um, the levels are larger and they're more diverse, but they're more diverse in stupid ways. Fighting in the city cityscape, fighting in the dock area where civilization is was fun. Yeah, like there's a board on on King of Monsters two where you're just like in the desert, and, and the whole oh, premise. Sucked. The whole premise of the second game is a new alien race comes to the planet, yeah. and three fighters are left from the old game, and now they're not they're not like the saviors of humanity or anything, but they are wanting to fight these monsters to prove that they're the strongest. They yeah. go they go to the the main ship of uh, the new alien race and fight their queen boss it's lame it's yeah, lame that's 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 unfortunate because there's this game has a lot of potential of course this formula has been used in other games absolutely that, that came out uh, i believe there's godzilla i had a game that i remember playing on like the PlayStation. that was very or maybe it was the dreamcast that was very similar to this and a lot of those monster games where it it's it's not about you necessarily fighting another monster uh or if it is about fighting another monster they go too to the too much to the extreme where you're not doing anything else but fighting the other monster. And that sucks too. There has to be a balance. And I think uh, King of Fighters or King of Monsters has a good balance. It just needs to be a better game. Yeah. Now, Aaron, did you know that this got ported to many home systems? I know for sure the Super Nintendo got a port of this. That's the one I That's do right. Know. Now, your your Super Nintendo port and your Genesis port actually cut characters. Oh. Yeah. Talk you, about making a shallow game even more shallow. Yeah. Instead Holy of having smoke. six characters to choose from, you only had four, and it removed two of the stages. So, uh, lame-tastic in that regard. Yeah. And you can't tell me that they couldn't have they couldn't have made it happen. I don't believe well, it. Uh, yeah. um, this was also came out on uh, the Wii Virtual Console, uh, the Nintendo Switch, the Xbox One, the PlayStation 4, Prime Gaming, which is Amazon's thing. Yeah. Uh, on the phone platform, and Aaron, did you know, because I did not know this, this has a Windows port. <laughs> yeah, there was a weird time <laughs> where some like weird stuff got ported to Windows, just like Samurai Showdown got ported, yeah. for example. And <clears throat> what you'll find is uh, none of the ports uh, add anything of note, uh, and if you're going to play this game, you want to play the original. 
You know, I thought you might mention this, but I want to bring it up because and I don't know how the home system is. But one thing this game did have going for it, well, there were several things, but one thing that I really liked was the music and the sound effects. When it starts yeah. up, it's just like, dun, dun. it's very sinister. And then some of the boards have some really awesome tunes. The, the second board I went to, I'm kind of what part of the city it was or part of the country, but it was like almost like chanting. Yeah. And it was really yes. cool. You know, it got you in the mood. So I, I'm going to give kudos to that. You don't hear maybe people talk about Neo Geo music that much, but that, that this thing can go yes. music-wise. And these are some awesome tunes in this. Like yeah. I said, they had so much going for it. They just didn't. I, I don't hate the game, yeah. but it just kind of it, 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 it was a, it was a C-plus effort. Yeah. Now, Aaron, how do you think this rated? Uh, probably not well. You you are, would be correct, sir. Uh, the highest score I could find for the game was a 5 out of 10, which I think that is about where it needs to be. I, I think it's a little better than that. Wouldn't you, don't, you don't think so? But, uh, uh, no, I think, I, think it's, I think that's exactly where it needs to be. <clears throat> now, there were people to rate it as low as a, a 1 out of 10, a 10%, and I think that is just ridiculous. That's not that good. Yeah, that's, that's ridiculous. That's not that good. So, uh, how, so you think it's somewhere in a sixty percentile, India? I, I certainly think it's uh, it's a five or six game. I think this is one that if you've never played it, by all means, go and give it a give it a look. It will definitely give you fifteen minutes of fun, uh, and then you can walk away from it and not have to be like, oh man, I wonder how this ends. I wonder what happens. Now you get in there, you get your fifteen minutes. You might give it another 15 minutes in a year or two, and that's exactly where this game needs to be. So what that's you, what you what do. Did you, how, how, what do you think of the difficulty? Uh, I found this game also sort of difficult. Well, it's an arcade game. Well, so I, I, I forgive a lot of that stuff. I think that you don't get enough health back between levels yeah. because you can fight one monster, win pretty easily, and then the second monster, you're, you're at usually no health or one fourth of your health and it, you just lose we so. did get a we did get a listener review at this our, yeah. good, our good buddy pajaco just under the wire by the way at, at five in the morning uh <laughs> he says uh i have dabbled with king of the monsters before in the past but whilst i love the theme there's always something about it that didn't quite click with me and having it pointed out to me of course is a wrestling game and i don't really enjoy wrestling type fighting games i guess that's what doesn't click <laughs> However, playing this for a short period again yesterday, I started to get the hang of it. Yes, yeah, started to enjoy it. But like other wrestling games, they just seem a bit clunky. I like the scenario interaction and destruction element uh, more than the fighting, which is probably why I prefer things like Rampage when it comes to monster fighting games. Ultimately, while it's not my bag, it's not a bad game, I think I'd have a lot more fun against friends with a couple of beers and some jokes with trash talking. A great, a, a great game, just not a top 10 for me personally. But if you haven't tried it, uh, give it a go, and you'll have some fun. And I will say, really, if they want to make the ultimate game, you could take all the elements of like a rampage, and then put this, put some the grappling in from this uh, a little more refined. That would be a lot of fun. If they could make something like that, oh, that would be a lot of fun. Because me and the boy were big fans of rampage, and we play rampage way more than we play this, just because of the destruction. Like you said, yeah. is really the main fun part of the See, game. See, I would rather take them take these environments and add WrestleFest type uh, controls. No, oh, there you go. We're all, hey, that would be... Listen, we're really dreaming now. So, <laughs> good stuff, uh, the Brent. That was an... Uh, you really thought outside the box on that one right there. So, I will uh, jump in here. You know, I wanted to play something that I'd never played before. And so, you, I went back you to... did. A, I went to a place I don't often go, which is the Super Famicom. Brand. In fact, I rarely go there. <laughs> I was uh, thinking a lot of places, but I but was just going to let it go. I was, I was nosing through wrestling games, and I saw something like, wait a minute, how could that have a game? And it does. And so the game I ended up choosing uh, this week is, bam, Onita Atushi FMW. Now, it rolls <laughs> off the tongue. <laughs> Bless uh, you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Uh, this is a game uh, that was released in Japan uh, alone, August 6, 1993, on the Super Famicom. Uh, it was uh, developed by an outfit called Marionette and published by Pony Canyon. <laughs> so that right there, if, nothing, if I didn't still confidence in you, nothing will. Just for some backstory, I, I'd never heard of either one of these outfits because they're in Japan. But believe it or not, 
as is often the case when you look into something from Japan, it's actually a, the huge, the huge companies. Pony Canyon's a mass media publishing company. It's been around since the '60s. They they publish all sorts of anime, music. Ah, there it is. They a lot of stuff, <laughs> and they've also done, done a ton of de game development for Japan. And I'm talking stuff like. Uh, 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 Hacker, Final Justice, Bubble Goats, Back to the Future. Some some titles you may have heard of uh, that you know uh, uh, the Ultima series. They did oh, those. Okay. You know, so these of course these are these are they the published they the, they developed the stuff for Japan, porting it over to you know whatever. Sure. Marionette, the developer, uh, is a uh, uh, they're in Tokyo and they've done a ton of games too. Again, these are games that they would have. Uh, if if Pony would have published them over there, then uh, Marionette would have probably done the translations on these games. Curse of Azure Bonds, uh, Pool of Radiance, a lot of the Silver Box games from back in the day. Zero Pilot, so a lot they've done. It's not like they fell out of the turnip truck. These guys are, and they're still around. These are huge, multi, you know, big deals, big big publishing companies. All right. Now, all right. with all that said, so the, uh, you're saying the pedigree's there. Well, I mean, eh, it is, eh. So. <laughs> Again, this is Anita Atushi uh, FMW. So you're probably asking yourself, what is that? Well, to fully explain what that is, I'm going to give you a, a very brief history lesson. FMW was a wrestling promotion called uh, Frontier Martial Arts Wrestling, which none of those things are true. They're, they don't... <laughs> because what they were was a death match. Uh, they were a death match promotion, or garbage wrestling, as it's commonly known. Uh, and the, it was found. It was basically Properly known. founded by Tushi Anita. Anita is a is a pretty big star in Japan. Uh, Anita, I'm trying to think of what his American equivalent would be. I mean, he's a real uh, uh, moody. I don't know, guy. I can't so think you. Of, like Raven. If you watch wrestling, that's who you reminded me a little bit. His big claim to fame is death matches and garbage matches. What are death matches? You are well. Uh, FMW promoted matches uh, where you would take the ring ropes off and you would put barbed wire in them. And then they would put barbed wire that exploded. Then they would have barbed wire that exploded. And outside the ring, there were little areas where every time you threw someone out there, it would explode. Then you, there were matches where the ring would be on fire. There was, a, <laughs> they, I mean, tons of, they had matches. There was one of my favorite matches where the ring was in the middle of this pool and they had to boat the wrestlers to the, to the ring and when you throw, got thrown out of the ring into the water, it exploded. Everything is an explosion. Some of the best matches, uh, 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 Anita versus Terry Funk, for example, a match where the referee was in a bomb outfit, like a like a, a full protection outfit. Because yeah, yeah. It was an exploding death match, and there's a big, huge counter up at the top uh, of the arena, counting down to zero. And no matter if the match didn't end in time, the ring exploded. And Anita's big gimmick would be, He'd pound down Terry Funk. He'd be leaving the ring, and Terry Funk was too weak to leave. And so at the last second, Onita would throw the referee out of the ring and cover Terry Funk as the ring exploded because he's a hero, Japanese hero. Uh, if you've never seen anything from FMW, you should look into it. It's, <laughs> it is one crazy promotion. Uh, they also had ladies' matches, which we'll get into uh, because that does bear into the game, believe it or not. Uh, sadly... <laughs> FMW's fortunes went south. Uh, the uh, guy that ran FMW was a guy named uh, uh, Arai. Arai allegedly got into it with the Japanese Yakuza. Ooh. He owed him a bunch of money. Ooh. And he changed FMW to a family-friendly WWF promotion-type promotion. It didn't get over well with hardcore fans. They're like, where's the garbage? He's like, we're no more garbage. And so they failed. And sadly... Uh, Arai was found, he'd hanged himself in a park by his own tie, so his life insurance would pay his Yakuza debts. This is all real. This isn't pro wrestling. So, this is hardcore. Uh, and they're, they've come back and forth a few times, but that's pretty much the story of FNW. So, with all that said, let we, this game honed in the view. Now, again, I'd never heard of this game. I'm guessing, Brent, that you'd never heard of it no, either. No, no, no. Uh, so, this game... Well, it is a game. We're going to go with that. Well, you should you should mention this is a prototype, not no, a... No, this is a finished release game. The, th the link I put oh. up was a prototype. This is a release game. Ooh. This was released and reviewed, Ooh. and you can buy it on eBay. Yeah. Well, let me tell you something. My opinion of this game just changed so, a whole lot. This game, you start, oh. you start it up, and the first thing you see is this giant 
uh, like I don't know, evil guy going like, whoa, I, don't, I guess he's the end boss. I never got to see him. Uh, no. Uh, what is he? No, that's not the first thing you see. What, what's the first thing you saw? Don't you? Doesn't the the ribbon hone into view before that? The ribbon? You, yeah. I, you played the prototype. I played the real game. I don't know. What to tell you okay. About what did you see? When I turn the game on, yeah. There's a swirl that looks like sort of like a ribbon trapped in an airflow. <laughs> And you know, it, we're it's, drinking. it's we're kind of dancing around the screen. I was like, because I had no idea what this was. Okay. Zero idea <laughs> okay. what this was. Okay. I, don't, I, I haven't seen what you're talking about. So I, I was just sitting there. Yeah. And I was like, okay. Oh, you're talking about this. This yeah. part here. Yes. Yeah. There is a long, the, the other guy comes up first. But yeah, there's a long, long, drawn out sequence <laughs> as this game starts. Where a glo- like a scribble comes traveling towards the camera. Yes, this does happen. <laughs> and I was like, okay, okay. And I kept waiting for the payoff, yeah. waiting for the payoff. And like twenty <laughs> seconds later, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, I don't like this game. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that it didn't start off too good. Oh god, yeah, I'd forgotten because I skipped that instantly. But yeah, it's a long scribble. It's just some Japanese writing. That I don't know what it says. So, at its heart, this wrestling game is a Street Fighter-type fighting game. I mean, sort of. That's what they were going for, all right? And so... Uh, it is not. Well, let, a... me, let me get this. Let me get okay. through this. You're killing me here. So, uh, the game starts off, you've got two options. That's it. And the options, are I found out, are one player or two players. Yes. Okay? Uh, when you start the game, you're given the choice of uh, four wrestlers, all right? Yeah. Uh, uh, one of them's Anita. Uh, one of the second guy is a guy named Tarzan Goto. He's in the uh, he's in the wrestling outfit that has the one the one strap over the shoulder. Yeah, the Andre the Giant. Then you've got uh, 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 this uh, kind of an old Japanese looking guy. That's Sambo Asako. And then the guy with that long hair is a guy named uh, Ricky Fuji. Ricky Fuji, quite a guy if you watch Japanese wrestling. Uh, there's also a hidden character, which I'll get into, but they don't get excited because they're impossible to play. Uh, then you've got uh, a series of people that you fight that aren't playable okay, yeah. for, for, for whatever reason. So what's the gimmick of this game? This game actually has two gimmicks, Brent. Gimmick number one, this game is a picture of fighting game where you basically have two attacks, all right, or two buttons that really attack, and a run button. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, I'm, you I've block, got that in my head. You block like you do in Street Fighter. You just pull right. back, okay? The the uh, One of the wackier elements is uh, you can go up and grapple your opponent. You basically yeah. run into them. Yeah. And at this okay. point, there the, you go into the grappling system of this game. Now, the grappling system, of, uh, and I found a fact. God bless this fact, because I was b- clueless before this. Underneath your power bar are three Japanese uh, characters, characters that are yeah. in little bars. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is your power bar for your grapples. Okay, right. you've got three types of grapples. Each character: a weak grapple, a medium grapple, and a strong grapple. Sure. Okay, by and you get these grapples by once you grapple, hitting a, an action button and pointing up, uh, right or down. Well, uh, it will give you the different like down gives you the strongest grapple, yeah, and up yeah. is the weakest, and then you'll perform the grapple. Now these characters have what they say are unique uh, uh, grapples. Some of them are unique, and some of them are, are that get repeated. Like a lot of guys, like for example, like do a pile driver. Correct. Now that's the grappling system. Okay, so that that's the grappling system. Now, yeah, uh, different characters. Only two of the characters can jump. A, like a, you would expect a character to jump. The other two, like uh, uh, Ricky Fuji and Anita, can jump and perform an attack, like a yes. flying attack. Yeah. Uh, uh, Which the, the computer does not do well with. Right. Well, I mean, you <laughs> could sort of get away with it, but you can't, you can't spam it really effectively. Uh, uh, Osco and Goto, they don't do a jumping attack. Well, they do, but they do, when you hit both buttons, they will do sort of a leap, a small leaping attack. They don't do a, They don't have the ability to jump. They're too, I don't know, old. They're too old or beat down or fat. I don't know what I don't know what you would say. Uh, your opponents in this, each opponent has like a unique stage for that opponent. And the stages are, are all gimmick matches. Uh, some of you would actually find in FMW and some of you wouldn't. The first match, you fight a sumo guy 
and his match is in a sumo circle, like a sumo ring. Yeah. But when you shove someone out of the ring, there's exploding like landmines that knock you back into the ring and do damage. Okay, simple. The second one takes place in a hangar, like a plane hangar. This one's you fight a cyborg character, and if you get too close to the edge of the screen, blow torches. This is not a real match, by the way. Blow torches come on, and they send you. Yeah. Right? So, and also. After the first match of the sumo, you see Mount Fuji erupt. And so in the second match, uh, fire rains down occasionally for no good reason. Just, uh, it, by the way, you're in a hangar, so I don't know how that happens. The third match, I got through all these matches. The third match is a no ropes, steel cage, exploding steel cage match. So you're in like a ring, and the cage is a cage, but when you throw a guy into it, he explodes. Yeah. Okay, so it's a lot like the first match. It's exactly like the first match. The fourth match, which is as far as I was able to get, this is the rooftop match, okay? This was weird. The roof, did you get this far? No, but I watched. (laughs) So, trust me, getting this far, I was like, I felt like the king of FMW to get here. In this match, you fight a guy who's like a hippie. The lowly kingdom. And the hippie, uh, uh, oh, I should mention in the cage match, you fight this boxer, okay? And so the hippie, I was whooping that hippie's butt, but then he does this thing where he blows his purple dust, and the screen goes, and starts getting wavy. And I guess what he does is get your wrestler screwed up on LSD. That's the only thing I can figure. And one thing I noticed is once he does this, he you can almost not hurt him at all. Yeah. And he just sits there and pummels you, and there's nothing you can do. So that and that's I was killing this guy until he blew the dust. I don't know if you have to kill him before the dust. No, well, I mean, I, from the playthrough I watched, <sighs> Uh, you eventually come out of that, yeah. so you just have to play defensively. The fifth match is Electrified Ropes Death Match, and you're fighting, a, a, ironically, a guy who's basically, he's, in the game they call him Inoba, but he's Antonio Inoki, which, unfortunately, Inoki just passed away. The legendary J- Japanese wrestler, bigger than Hulk Hogan, he's a huge star, a political figure, uh, and a, uh, a guy who was around forever. One of the fa- he was the father of New Japan Wrestling. And Anoki had a, uh, Onita and Anoki had problems in real life. And so it's interesting that Anoki, a ripoff Anoki would appear in this game because him and Anita didn't get along in real life. Uh, anyway, in this match, uh, you play, it's an electrified ropes death match. They actually, like I said, they actually have these uh, in, uh, 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 in uh, FMW back in the day. The sixth match is a barbed wire death match. And you take on Bondage, who is a leather-clad uh, S&M type character. I didn't get this far, but uh, barbed wire death matches, they have those all the time. All the time. That's that's like their opening bout, is a barbed wire death match. And then in the seventh and final battle, uh, you will fight, I guess you fight that end guy in a thunder cage death match. Uh, and it's a no-rope exploding steel cage death match. That's basically what it is, but the game calls it a thunder cage death match. I think it's because the the guy can shoot down lightning on you occasionally and nail you. So now, but the, here's the thing. Yeah, you fight him in the first round because these are all two round affairs. Yeah. The second round, you have to fight yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get to that part, which is dumb. So again, you've got four characters to pick from. Now, however, as you go through the game in between the matches, there are these little like uh, I don't know what you would call them, dialogue boxes or whatever that pop up, and occasionally you'll see. Uh, a girl, and she's also in the cover of this game, and which is funny because she's not really heavily featured in the game. The girl is a Megumi Kudo. Kudo was a great wrestler. Believe it or not, as baffling as this seems, FMW had a women's division. And the women, by the way, got bu- occasionally butchered. I mean, these FMW is hard, hardcore. I mean, guys would just come up to another guy with like a side, that's where it would just cut, cut into his forehead. This was garbage wrestling, right? And the girls did the same thing. So you see this beautiful, attractive, uh, voluptuous Japanese girl getting butchered by this hideous killer. Uh, well, the, my favorite of the hideous killers is actually featured in the game as one of the bosses, Combat Toyota. Just uh, this chick that was, she was as round as she was tall. She wore like Road Warrior face paint. She was super evil. I hated her so much back in FMW because she would butcher everybody. So if you play, if you get to the point where you unlock Kudo, uh, you can actually fight combat. Kudo doesn't do jack squat. As a hidden character, she sucks. She can't jump. She's no special, but she's no good. But I guess they wanted to stick her in there because she had some sort of selling 
because she was a hot Japanese girl they could put on the cover. Yeah. But I mean, that's her, effectively that's her entry. And from what I could make out of the little dialogue box in between matches, I don't know if she's sending the wrestler love letters. Or something. There's always little hearts and stuff, but I can't. I don't know what it said, and I couldn't find anyone that would took the time to translate this game. You know, if it wasn't for the fact I'd found, I would have been completely boned. Um, I noticed this game, the bad guys are cheap. Uh, some of them are super cheap. It took me for, I'm a pretty good hand at fighting games. This isn't like a conventional fighting game. It's choppy. The the, the leaping attacks, like I usually play Danito or, or uh, uh, Ricky uh, or Ricky from Fuji because those guys can jump. Not having the ability to jump, you're, it's, some of the characters, you're screwed. Yeah. And, and even if you have the ability to jump and attack, you're probably also screwed. It's a hard, hard game. The grappling system, I, every time I thought I'd come to grips with it, I couldn't get it to work right. You know, because I, I knew what, what position to have the joystick in to get the move off, but I couldn't always get it off. And well, you had to have the power. The bar filled up to that point. Right, to but do I the mean, the bar, I, the bar fills up pretty quick. Yeah. You know, and, so I'm, and it, the thing is, you're not going to grapple your strongest uh, hold every time, or not grapple, but spam it, because you can't. Right. It's not the worst. That part is not the worst, but the control, I found the controls in this overall kind of clunky. What did you think of this uh, this one, Brent? Crap! Crap, no word of fan. Holy cow. First of all, <laughs> let me express my absolute displeasure for garbage wrestling. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's a lot of people garbage. Don't like it. Yeah, a lot of people don't garbage. like it. Garbage. It is garbage. This is <laughs> this is no disrespect to the uh, the players in the game. Yeah. Uh, you know, they they're doing their thing, right? I, whatever. But to the people who like this, what's wrong with you? Yeah, and I've been to a few. I've been to King of the Death matches. I've been to a few IWA shows, which is a local garbage promotion, and it is every bit as disgusting live as it is on yeah. TV. Yeah. Now, and I'm not like, oh, they should all play patty cakes, right? Yeah. Now, I mean, wrestling. It's a show, and, it, and it's usually a the show with as basic a theme as ever: good versus evil. Yeah. And, and if someone gets you know, fake hurt, or you know. They blade and they cut. I, I that, I'm not. I that, okay, okay. I'm that whatever. I don't care about that kind of crap. But when the whole match is centered around just physically maiming your opponent, that's garbage. Yeah, that I hate Love that it. garbage. It is. Yeah. And it's usually it's usually uh, uh, unfortunate that the people who put themselves in the situation almost always died a young age. Oh, no, that's yeah. not true. There's tons of these. Anita's still around. Nah. He's been through the ringer a million times. No. They, ah, they, they don't die at a young age. That's not die. true. No. So, let's talk real quick about the game. Yeah. You, know, you, you talked about... <laughs> yeah. You talked about all these... seven stages and all the crazy stuff that Well, happened. I don't think I built it that heavily. <clears throat> it's two stages where... The, the the they can call it an electrified barbed wire match or exploding sand match or whatever, <laughs> but it's always the exact same thing. If you get to the edge of the screen, there's an explosion, you take damage and bounce back to the well, middle. Not, not the psychedelic one. That, that's the only <laughs> different one. And it's not different from a cool wrestling perspective. It's different from a stupid, cheap perspective. Yeah. So... <laughs> Don't be fooled by thinking there's all these cool different match types. There's not. And I like different match types. Yeah, because we're both big fans. Ladder like matches, world heroes cage matches. Yeah. You know, when you when you actually have different concepts going on, you can do a lot of fun things with that in wrestling. Yeah. This did not. The the grapple system in this game, it's fine. It's fine. You build up your meter, you can do your strong your smaller moves. If you grapple someone and you don't have enough meter to do a move, you get reversed, or you just fail one yeah, or the other. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that's fine. Um, <clears throat> however, the animations in this game are like three frames of animation. Yeah, they're not the That's best. why I thought this was unreleased. If this is a finished product... Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, my. It's, it's finished. <laughs> oh, this is embarrassing. Well, it, it was is on, it was done on the cheap. Embarrassing. Uh... The, the 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 gameplay in this is just horrible. Uh, the the subject matter is crap. Uh, I can't think of a single. Oh, the intro made me want to to choke out puppies. <laughs> like yeah. a squiggle. The uh, uh, no aspect of this game is good. 
Well, None. I forgot to mention that we're looking at it now the, when you, on the psychedelic phase. When the psychedelics kick in, your opponent becomes a giant mushroom. Yeah. I mean, come on, there's. They, they, I, I noticed that the backgrounds in this weren't bad. Like in like in the sumo uh, part, occasionally a bullet train will come by, which is kind of nice. Listen, there's blimps when, going by. When, and when stuff. the highlight of the game is occasionally a train goes by, <laughs> you're that's bad. Well, I know. Listen, I never played this before. I didn't know it. This is the game that FMW deserves. That's what I like about it. Listen, you don't like the game? That's fine. This is the this is as good as it gets. It's bad. You know, uh, TNA wrestling got a game. It was what TNA deserved. They, sometimes you get what you get because that's what you got coming to you. And FMW, this is what they had coming to you. It's the thing is though, I played this. Uh, listen, it's not a good game. No. Okay. However, a it solid was, three. It's super, it's super <laughs> duper duper challenging, and the good thing but is, but not in you, a good way. If you lose a fight, you can just start the fight over. You don't have to go all the way back. Oh, let me and, stop. Let me stop you right there. Yeah, and mention something about that. Yeah, the ending animations between rounds <laughs> they take a are while. too long. <laughs> yeah, yeah they holy do. crap! There's one. It's one thing to get to gloat over your victory. Yeah, but it, it's like seven or eight seconds. Every loss. <laughs> What's funny is like I like Onid is because after the match is over, he'll stand there doing nothing. Yes. He's not posing. He's not and then after about five seconds he goes, Ah just raises his hand and makes this noise. That's it. And that takes a while too. It's like, man, yeah, you're it's not good. But if you like to get down there and 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 literally play in the mud, which I do on these some of these bad games. There, I actually had something resembling a good time just by trying to figure out how to get past guys. And I will say, when I got past the guy in this, I was I was dying to get to that psychedelic level. I was dying to see it, and so I, I, I tried real hard to get past that robot in the hangar. He was tough to beat, but I, when I finally beat him, I was so happy. I had to get beat, beat by a boxer, and when I finally beat him, I was like, "Oh, I did it! I did it! I finally got there!" And then I couldn't beat the psychedelic guy, but at least I got there. I, so I guess I derived some pleasure from the game. Uh, it is not a popular game. In fact, it's listed often as one of the worst wrestling games of all time, and that's up against some stiff competition <laughs> in that department. We believe it or not, someone did subject themselves to this. I think it was Pajaco oh, again. Uh, He's a who, trooper. He is a trooper. And he writes, uh, a, as an unreleased title, That, by the way, that's incorrect. I, I've, I listed a, uh, a, a on archive.org, you can play this, and they have it listed as a prototype, but this was released. I want to make that abundantly clear. Uh, uh, I loaded this up and instantly thought this is not a uh, Super Nintendo game. Heck, it's not even a Super A-Can quality game. <laughs> so as I've mentioned, I don't get, really get on with pro wrestling, but even this one felt slow and unresponsive. Like you would get a grapple on, press some buttons, and the two combatants would stand motionless for an eternity, and then the move happens. Or when one character went down, there was a noticeable delay when you waited for the round to complete. The game isn't a complete train wreck, though. I like that you could push your opponent out of the ring for some damage, and some of the moves feel quite satisfying when they happen. Would I recommend this one? No. There are plenty of other decent wrestling games, and heck, you can even uh, get King of the Monsters for the Super Nintendo. Check it out, by all means, but go with low expectations, and you'll be fine. I think that's a very fair assessment of this game. You know, the game has digitized graphics in it. It's got some digitized sound in it. Uh, it's got some... Uh, uh, it's got some unique concepts, I think, and uh, they're, I mean, they're not that unique. Okay, I'm stretching here. It's not that good. But if you want to watch FMW game, go check it out. No. You also should really go check out some FMW just matches because... No, you should. No, some of them are quite amusing, no. I have to say. No. And so... Now, if you want funny wrestling, there's much better places to get it. Oh, I looked this up on the internet. Uh, if you want to buy this, I saw these going for like 23, 24 uh, bucks. So you can get the cartridge, cartridge only. Now, as we close, well, before, let me tell you something, Aaron. Yeah, but this game, crap. Okay, but okay. you know what's not crap? What's that, dude? RetroRewind.ca. Well, you're right because while we watched horrible grappling, Frank grapples with horrible machines every day. But thankfully, unlike Onita-san. Frank has the skills to win these grappling battles and do them with a flourish that we haven't seen for quite a while. Uh, do you have a Commodore machine on hand or, that you need to have looked at 
fear not. You're not going to be sending this thing to FMW. You're not going to Japan because the Retro Rewind staff are in the friendly confines of Canada. And they'll be more than happy to take on any work you send their way uh, in, in the Commodore family of machines or the TRS-80 car computers. Uh, on top of repair work, uh, the people at RetroRewind.ca are more than happy to send you things. Yes. You need uh, diagnostic tools. Do you need uh, SD solutions for your Commodore or Coco? Do you need uh, storage uh, uh, applications like uh, uh, things that put in there to replace your hard drive? They've got yeah. that. Uh, Frank is a full service shop. He can buy, uh, he can send you what you need and you can buy what you need from him. Uh, and he's a heck of a good pal of the show. Absolutely. Uh, you always get the pinfall with Director Rewind. There's no count outs because his service is fast. And there's no DQ because this guy knows his craft, Brent. It's RetroRewind.ca. Absolutely. Now, it's that time. I hate to leave pro wrestling behind because I'm uh, going You that. know what? I feel okay leaving it behind. But let's uh, let's spin the wheel here. What do we add this week to Brent to the wheel? The we massive wheel. We added a little piece yeah, he's at the called there you go. Video Games of South Africa. Oh, whoa! Oh, you could have just stopped that video game. That would be a great <laughs> piece. <clears throat> video Games of South Africa. Now yes. that is something way outside the box. Yeah. And what's the Retro Rewind piece? The Retro piece? Rewind piece is C64 cartridge games. Oh. Oh, dandy. Are you ready to Brent? I am. Spin that sucker. Man, a mighty spin. I done, I done spin the logo off. Just fix the logo. How come we don't have our cool Beardy logo? That's the old logo one there. All right, what do we have okay. here, Brent? Here we go. Protagonist based on sentient animated objects. What, what is that? Is that is that one from Rushi? That is a Rushi special. Hey, hold on, get that out of there. Give me that. No, because I misspelled objects. Just give it to me. Oh, anyway. okay. There you go. Protagonists based on sentient inanimate objects. Yes. Or objects. That's and, right. Now, what does that mean, the brand? That means if the if the hero of your game is a plastic spoon, you're right. in. If the hero of your game is uh, an overweight chest of drawers, you're in. If so, it, but if it's like some kind of bunny character, mm, ah, okay, so, no good. So you're telling me that yeah. we're gonna have, the bad guy has to be a non no, no. Oh the oh yeah sorry okay oh, no <laughs> pro, this is weird tag tag and this is the bad guy was per Rushi on that level with the hippie in the Onita game when he That's came right. up with that I don't know how we're gonna grapple with this one uh, the Brent that is that's a weird one there but we'll figure something out uh, listen as we draw this show to a close. I uh, just wanted to uh, issue a few things. First, uh, thanks everybody for uh, turning out again last week to the International Computer Club. The uh, uh, part one's already been listed, and part two will be going up this week. Had to make a few edits in that thing. Uh, uh, we've got a big event coming up uh, the day after Thanksgiving, and that is Thanks for Giving Marathon, yes. ARG's uh, favorite time of the year because that's when we get, get to play to marathon. Oh, well, that, and that's the day after the eating. Uh, <laughs> this will be November 25th. Probably kick this off about what nine a.m. That's what we usually kick it off at. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll go and, between eight and twelve hours of nonstop gaming action. Yeah, uh, and it's a way of saying thank you uh, to our Patreons, to our supporters, to our sponsors, to our watchers, to our listeners, to people who donated at uh, Megathon, people who came to Boat Fest. It's just, just a big old thank you. It's an excuse to play a bunch of games. Well, this is we're not we don't want money. Well, I mean, we'll take your money, but we don't want your money. We're not trying to get you to pay for anything. We're not wanting you to come there and donate a big wad of cash to a, to a certain charity. This is just about getting together, having a good time together, playing some games. Very good. Now, do you have a special gimmick this year, a wheel gimmick that you're going to unveil? I don't know. No, South. Well, I think he doesn't know. Uh, so that will be uh, coming up towards the end of November now. There's a uh, event that I'm going to be hosting. I think Brent will be at least be uh, involved in some capacity, and that is going to go down on Friday, October 28th, probably around eight o'clock uh, p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and it's whoo, conversations. 
from the dark side. Yes. Our horror Halloween. You really bait drove show. that out, Aaron. That's I was right. trying to be kind of eerie. Well, I thought you were it just I turned like you were big at all. <laughs> uh, Conversation from the dark side will be our uh, once this year. It's a one time shot. I think it's we're going to make this. This is going to be. It's like a pay per view once a year now. An annual. Oh, let's charge the Annual for tradition. It. And a conversation with the dark side will be uh, hosted by myself. And I think Rob Fleck O'Hare is going to be uh, sitting in the hot seat beside me. And we're going to be really op- opening up the Zoom. And we're going to be and we're going to be having people come in to tell their horror horror tales, their stories, uh, their Halloween tales, uh, ghost sightings. You know, we'll take anything. And you've got from now until uh, that day to send in text, uh, email. You can send emails to darkside at mail or at, at uh, email dot com. You can also send any stories, pictures, video, whatever you got. You can send it to arg at mail.com. We'll take any way you can go. More information available in the uh, Discord, uh, and we'll be streaming that on Twitch. Again, that will be the uh, at 8 o'clock p.m. on Friday, October the 28th. I think that's all we've got, Brent. So next week, we'll be... <laughs> I thought this was the pie piece. It's part of the hat. Uh, next week, we'll be trying this wacky game that Brent's already stowed. Keep that out, because I'm about to read that again after the show. Uh, thank you, Rushi, for suggesting that wacky thing. We're out the door, everyone. Thanks for joining us. We will see you again next time. Hi, everybody. Adios. Thanks for joining us today. We really hope you enjoyed the show. A special thank you to Duck and Styles for our vector style graphics and Bartbit for our amazing music. Would you like to help keep ARG spinning? You can do so at patreon.com slash ARG presents. Just like these fine folks. Dryerlet 17. Laron Garut. Templar Mar, Z9K9, Jerry Dennington, John Dykeman, Retroalgy, Airshack, Texas Foosballer, Sundown, O'Raw, Super Tech Boy, David Terrence, Mr. B, Roushy, Ram, W. Betke, Dave Velociraptor, Bernhardt Lucas, Steve Rathmussen, Anthony Jarvis, Bitter Blitter, Jocko 6502, Kevin Bean, Andy Jones, Andy Craig, Rob Black O'Hara, Jason Warns, Mitsuyama, Chris Foles, Frodo NL, The Slow Norris, Terry Howard, Olaf Hope, and Rolo. They all have access to our Discord channel, their name called out in the credits and visualize in the ending scene. Have an idea for a wheel piece? You can send it to us at argpresents at mail.com.